Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to do a book haul. This is books that I bought through the last few months. Uh, some more recently, some a few weeks ago, but in general they are recent. Not this month in particular because I don't buy or at least I don't usually buy many books in one particular month I do it throughout time so this is just uh, I think they are 10 books some were small others a bit large you know a bit of everything so I'm going to start with Neuromancer by William Gibson this is a sci-fi science fiction book that I I was eager to read. I heard about this series for a very long time and I love science fiction. Did I say science fiction? I don't know what I said. Whatever I said, I meant science fiction. So this was published in 1984 and it was awarded with several awards and this was the first novel by William Gibson so that's remarkable so it was awarded with Hugo, Nebula and Philip K. Dick so only the most prestigious awards of science fiction so just for that you know the quality of this book so this book is uh, as I said uh, in a series and it's composed by four books. This is the first one, Neuromancer, but we have, I think we could say a prequel. So the book zero, that is called Burning Chrome. Then we have, after this one, we have the second book that is called Count Zero. And we have the third book that is called Mona Lisa Overdrive. So, I have here in my computer a bit of uh, the um, synopsis because I don't really know much about this book I just hear with the booktubers that I follow that also read science fiction I uh, always heard them recommending this series in particular so that's why I said that I knew very well but just by hearing about it, not so much because I know the story or the plot in itself. Our main char character is called Henry Dorset Case. He was the sharpest data thief in the business until vengeful former employees crippled his, nerves, his nervous system. But now a new and very mysterious employer recruits him for a last chance run. The target? A unthinkable powerful artificial intelligence orbiting Earth in service of the sinister Tessier Harshpool business, business clan. With a dead man riding shotgun and molly, mirror eyed street samurai to watch his back, Case embarks on an adventure that ups the end on an entire genre of fiction. So, I think this is intriguing. They say this is the first book that talks about the Matrix um, and I'm really curious about those type of subjects and with all happening right now with artificial, uh, artificial intelligence I think this book is a very interesting maybe point of view to read about and see if the author in 1984 have a vision of what was going to happen in the future, so today. So yeah, I'm very intrigued and very excited to read this one. So, the next one is Pachinko by Min Jin Li. This is um, a Portuguese edition. I was waiting for this book to be published in Portugal for a very long time. I wanted this book in Portuguese because I intend to borrow the book 
that's what I do with many of my books. So I was really eager that this book was published in Portugal. This is from 2017 and isn't this cover beautiful? I love this cover, it's my favorite one, I have to say. From all that I saw, the Portuguese edition is my favorite one. I'm a bit suspect, but you know. So, a bit about the plot. In the early 1900s, teenage Sunja, the other daughter of a crippled fisherman, falls for a wealthy stranger at the seashore near her home in Korea. He promises her the world, but when she discovers she is pregnant and that her lover is married, she refuses to be bought. Instead, she accepts an offer of marriage from a gentle, sickly minister passing through on his way to Japan. But her decision to abandon her home and to reject her son's powerful father sets of a dramatic saga that will echo down through the generations. And this book was finalist of the National Book Award for Fiction. So another book that was in, on, didn't won, but it was on the runs to won an award. And I heard so many good things about this book. And I also heard about a series that I'm really curious to watch mainly because it has Lee, um, Lee Min Hu. I love that actor, that Korean actor. And yeah, I'm really curious to read this one. I think I'm going to love it because I love family dramas and family sagas. So I'm very, very, very excited. So the next three books that I have here are from Penguin Modern. Uh, they are as you can see, they are very small, so this is works that are or are essays, or commentaries, or reflections, or poems, as I have here. So, the first one I have here is Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. It says here, these two classics essays, so it has two, let me see. So this is composed by Nutzon Kemp, the first essay, and then One Culture and the New Sensibility, the second one. And on the back it says, these two classics essays were the first works of criticism to break down the boundaries between high and low culture and made Susan Sontag a literary sensation. So this thing that about low, high and low culture is a topic recurrent on Susan Sontag's works, I think. If not her works, I think in her ideals. Because I read the, Rolling, the complete Rolling Stone interview with Jonathan Scott. Um, and there she, in the... Not in the interview, but I think in the preface, the author uh, refers a phrase that she has said before about how she loves Dostoevsky, but she loves The Doors as well, the band. Um, so she is very eclectic and I think she criticizes the criticism that other intellectuals and other critics do about popular culture so they they demean or uh, they diminish the importance of popular culture and she doesn't agree with that so i think at least notes on camp will be about that and i'm very interested about so this was um a promotion that a bookstore here in Portugal did and I took part of it and bought these three books. So the next one is Create Dangerously by Albert Camus. Let me see the index. So this is composed by Create Dangerously, Defense of Intelligence 
and Brave and Freedom. So this is our essays as well, I suppose. And in the back it says, Camus, Camus har argues passionately that the artist has a, res a responsibility to challenge, provoke and speak up for those who cannot in this powerful speech, accompanied here by two others. So, Create Dangerously is one of the essays, so this is more of a, a reflection of, of the author, which I'm really interested in. And I never read anything by Albert Camus, so this, is be, this will be, uh, for now, if I don't buy anything else, my first endeavor in the writings of this author, so I'm, I'm really excited. Then I have here something that I have to say that I thought it was something else. So this is I Have More Souls Than One by Fernando Pessoa. Fernando Pessoa is a Portuguese poet that I really love. I read some poems by him many years ago. I don't remember right now any of the poems that I read, but I know I read them. And I also wrote by him a, wor a prose work that is called The Book of Disquiet. I read it last year. It was my top reading from last year. And I thought this, this book, this little book was a prose work as well, but apparently it is poems, as you can see. So this is written in the voices of four different alter egos, these rich, rich, strange and mesmeric verses by Portugal's greatest poet express a maelstrom of conflicted thoughts and feelings. So... This is, so Fernando Pessoa is known to have many alter egos. I talk a little bit about that in my review of the, um, the book of Disquiet. I called it heteronyms, I think it exists in English, so it's the same thing. And this is Pessoa as Alberto Caeiro, Pessoa as Ricardo Reis, Pessoa as Álvaro de Campos, and Pessoa as Pessoa. So this is a compilation of some poems by the different alter egos of Fernando Pessoa. So the, this, these three books are all in English, so this work in particular was translated by Jonathan Griffin. And you know, it will be a challenge, I suppose, for me to read these poems in English. It will be an uh, interesting project, in a way. But of course, that I want to read Fernando Pessoa's uh, Fernand Pessoa poems in Portuguese because it was the language that he chose to write, uh, to write them. And I think mainly and principally the translated works of poems are in, in, are in great because I think, you know the term lost in translation? I think that's what, happen, what happens when translating poems. So, let's see. Then the next one is Vertigo by Boilu or Boilo Narsajak. I don't know how well to pronounce it, so please excuse me. I hope I did a more or less job. <laughs> this was published in 1958, yes. And this book inspired the movie by Alfred Hitchcock with James Stewart and Kim Novak. So I never saw any movie by Alfred Hitchcock. I know, don't, don't come for me. But I'm planning to um, correct that. I have uh, an idea that I want to do a little bit of a, of a project 
to see old movies and classics from the 50s and the 40s and so on. And of course, Alfred Hitchcock is a reference in cinema. He was revolutionary in many sense, in many, in many ways. So I want to see all of his movies, but you know, that will take a bit of time. But well, about this book in particular. So I bought this book because of that, because I heard so many people talking about Alfred Hitchcock and talking about Vertigo, not because I heard anything about what the movie was about. I have to go and read the synopsis. But I heard many people talking about this book because of the movie of Hitchcock. So that's why. So I, from the research that I did, this book has different titles in different countries. So in here, in the book, in the details about the book, we have a original title as Swords Freud or another version d'entre le mort I'm trying to uh, pronunciate my French as well as I can <laughs> the a more literal translation would be among the dead also known as vertigo and also known as the living and the dead so this has a bit of differences, I suppose, in different editions, but it's all the same book. So this passes in Paris in 1940, and the ex-detective Roger Flaviers is contacted by an old acquaintance who asks for a strange favor. The wife of this acquaintance has been having a strange behavior mysterious absences, melancholia that leads her to contemplate the waters of the Seine for hours, visits to the cemeteries, and he wants that the friend watches her to understand what is going on. And the detective accepts and dedicates his time to pursue meddling. The curiosity soon transforms in obsession, the dreams in nightmares. This is the story of a desperate man tormented by the search of the truth and that ends up to be destroyed by an obscure and terrible secret. So, this is, I suppose we can classify it as a, a bit of a thriller, something a, a mystery. So, uh, I never read anything from that genre, do you believe it? <laughs> but you know, um, if you don't know my story or my history um, with reading, please go watch my first video on YouTube. There I explain a bit of my reading, my reading path. So you will understand why I have never read thrillers or anything like that. And I'm very curious to read this one and then watch the movie. So I suppose that when I uh, come to this reading, um, I will do a review video about the book and the movie. So we can have here a more enlarged perspective on the story. I suppose that uh, the movie is not so faithful to the story of the book because they almost never are, but we shall see. Then we have here a book that I also heard some people talking about it and mostly I heard many good things about the author. And this is Intellectuals and Society by Thomas Sowell. So this was published in 2009. From this author, I also want to read Conflict of Visions because I want to be more knowledgeable about politics 
and why people think so differently and in that book is supposed to be a bit about that subject but well more about the book that i have here so intellectual and society not only examines the track record of intellectuals in the things they have advocated but also analyzes the incentives and constraints under which their views and visions have emerged one of the most surprising aspects of this study is how often intellectuals have been proved not only wrong but grossly and disastrously wrong in their prescriptions for the ills of society and how little their views have changed in response to empirical evidence of the disasters entailed by those views so of what i heard and what i just uh, read of the synopsis we can see that this is a criticism to the predictions and the commentaries that intellectuals or those known as intellectuals of societies do and how sometimes they predict something and it's totally wrong and how we little sometimes little care for it and don't call their attention or their we don't correct them or criticize them and they continue to be vocal and be public and be called to television and so on and we don't correct them or anything so i think more or less this book talks about that and as you can see this is a very large book and it says in this edition it says revised and a large edition so i'm very curious to pick this one up and I'm very curious to read more about Thomas Sowell. This is a very acclaimed author, we can say, in the field. So, yeah. Then we have St. Joan of Arc, A Life Inspired by Wyatt North. So this was a book that I saw a booktuber talk about not so much talk about but show us in uh, the stories of her instagram and i was very curious um because this one and another book that i'm going to show to show you uh, they are part we can say of a project that i have which is to read the bible i already took i already took in hand to buy some um, books that will be um, my research research not so much research how can i say it support books backing books that explain and have some context on the books of the bible so i have i bought a guide as well i have to say to you that i'm agnostic but i'm very curious to read the bible because i think i think no it's a fact that the bible inspired and is at the basis of many works in western culture so i want to read the book that inspired so many authors throughout the years and um, many works and many classic works reference stories of the Bible so I want to read you know the original stories to have more of context and be more knowledge about those stories and so this book comes up a bit in that uh, project because when I saw this book in that story of the booktuber that i was talking about um i was intrigued because i i know the story of john of arc by movies by some people telling me about it but i never read anything from it 
forgot about it. And so in the back we have Joan of Arc was declared a saint in 1920 by Pope Benedict XV who called her a most brilliantly shining light of God. From a story emerges a persona that millions, Catholics and non-Catholics alike, have come to regard as the embodiment of courage and faith. So this is a bit of a biography, we can say. It's not so long and I think this is a character, not a character, a person or a, a figure that is almost mythical. So I was very interested to read something about it. Then in this context, I bought Orthodoxy by J.K. Chesterton. <laughs> Do you see the size of this book? I wasn't expecting this sizes but you know and the letters are really small do you can see i i would prefer a larger book with a bit of um a bigger font so but you know it was because this was a, a better price so it's my fault well, this was published in 1908, I suppose. I'm not so sure because in here we don't have information about the edition. Yeah, but I think this was... let me check. Yes, in Goodreads it also says it was published in 1908. So, a bit of what says in the back. Orthodoxy is a book by J.K. Chesterton that has become a classic of Christian apologetics. Chesterton considered this book a companion to his other work, Heretics, writing it expressly in response to J.S. Street's criticism of the earlier work that he was not going to bother about his theology until I had really stated mine. In the book's preface, Chesterton sta states the, pur the purpose is to attempt an explanation not of whether the Christian faith can be believed, but of how he personally has come to believe it. In it, Chesterton presents an original view of Christian religion. He sees it as the answer to natural human needs, the answer to a riddle in his own words and not simply as an arbitrary truth received from somewhere outside the boundaries of human experience. So Chesterton wrote this book when he was an Anglican and he converted to Catholicism 14 years later. So I heard many people talking about this book as well. And this is, as I've said, in, in the project of reading the Bible. So I'm thinking, of course, the project of reading the Bible will take me many years. I think I can say that because I'm not planning to read every day the Bible and maybe I can't even complete each book in each month. That was what I was intending, but I don't think that will be possible. But well, whatever and whatever I do, uh, this book will be read, I suppose, after I read the Bible. So I have the context of the primordial book, the Bible, and then read some works about it. Okay, and the last one is about or is of an author that I, I don't know how, how I came to know her or how I heard about her books or I heard about her. But somewhere on the internet I discovered her and I was very interested 
in reading something from her and that and I'm talking about Hayan Hirsi Ali and the book that I have here is Heretic Why Islam Needs a, Refor a Reformation Now So this was published in 20 2015 a bit what says in the back So the author argues that it is foolish to insist that the violent acts of Islamic extremists can be divorced from the religious doctrine that inspires them. Instead, we must confront the fact that they are driven by a political ideology embedded in Islam itself. She makes a powerful case that a religious reformation is the only way to end the terrorism, sectarian warfare and repression of women, women and minorities that each year claim thousands of lives throughout the Muslim world. So it says more about it, but I think this synthesizes what the book is about. So as you can conclude by now, I'm very interested in the subject of religion. That is a subject that uh, really interests me because I find it fascinating and I want to be more knowledge about almost if not all that is my goal my ut utopi <laughs> um, I want to know not everything but something about all religions or at least the main ones and Islam is one of the religions that I'm also very interested about and as I was saying this author you know caught my interest and caught my eye and she has more published works about this subject that I'm eager to get into but this one was one that I chose also because of the price I'm a bit of um, <laughs> I'm on a budget, I don't have uh, a big budget to spend on books so whenever I can have a good deal or um, a good purchase in terms of price I, I take advantage, advantage of it so you know <laughs> that's why I'm, um, I began to ask you to buy through my Amazon links because it's a way for you to help me so I can buy more books you don't pay anything more because of it it's only you do a purchase and I receive a small commission it's very small so don't worry and yeah this is my request I took this time to do that so and yeah well this is my book haul I think this video was very long I talk too much and I talk, talk slowly, so I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell, bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah. I see you on the next one. Bye!